Hi everyone, my name is Subhu Devalapalli and I'm product manager for Oracle Entitlement Server. Let's see how to get a simple Java API example working in this session. That will give you an idea as to what the product is and how to use it. First, we'll create some sample policies. These are just very rudimentary basic policies. And after that, we'll, cre we'll actually create an SM instance. This SM instance will be wired to whatever policies that we created earlier. And we'll create a sample application. You can find code for sample application may block. This is a quick and dirty look at OES policy model. We won't be going through all the policy details. If you are looking for more information, the best place to find it would be either OES documents or you can also go through my blog where I'll be periodically posting articles. You can think about application as a container for policy objects. That is all OES policy objects are grouped under one of the application names. And SM name is, is a collection of application. So SM tends to map to say a cluster ID, right? Cluster ID maps to a given set of applications and these applications periodically get deployed as a collection. And resource is whatever object that you're trying to protect, right? It could be either uh, a regular Java object, EJB, JSP, or a UI element, or it can also be a service or a business process. An action is the kind of operation that you're trying to perform on an object. So if your object is a car, right, you can hit on the accelerator or you can hit on the brake, you can steer the car. So you have all these different kinds of operations you can that you can perform on the object car. So an action would represent the operation you're trying to perform on the object or a business process. And resource type is what pulls all the resources together. Uh, so in some ways, resource type actually abstracts the commonality between different resources. So if you're, if, if you're uh, if you're trying to product different kinds of cars, right? All cars have an accelerator, a brake, and a steering wheel, right? So you pull all the common behavior among these cars into the resource type car, where at, in one location you can define accelerate, brake, and, and any other kind of operation that you want. Authorization policy is a main business end of, uh, of OES policy model. Authorization policy is what determines who is allowed to access a certain resource or who is given grants and, and under what conditions access needs to be denied. Right? Uh, so in a simplistic way, authorization policy is a mapping between users, groups, objects that they're trying to access and actions they're trying to perform. Now let's get started with the real code sample. Let's log into administration console and create some sample policies. First, we need to create an application. An application is what contains all policy objects. So click on application, give it a display name and a name. And then click on save. And then close the tab. So as you will see, we have a new dashboard. Click on new resource type. So we're creating a resource type that will uh, be associated with the set of resources. Give it display name and name. Click on save. And now let's add some actions. So I'm filling in write and read. So write and read are, are operations or actions that you can perform on the specific resource type. That means all resources using the resource type will have read and write operations defined on them. Now click a, uh, click the new resource, give a display name and a name. And click on save. Close the tab. So we just created a new resource. Now let's go and create an authorization policy. Uh, give it a display name and a name. Like we, uh, it's the same as what we've done before. And let's add a new principle to the policy. Click on users. And let's search for user web logic. 
and just click on select all and you need to click on add principles it's off the screen now let's add a target target is object that you're trying to protect and we can click on search and you'll see the resource that we just created click on add all and and then you have to click on add targets you can't see that on the screen here let's give right access for user web logic on the resource so click on write click on save one of the things you might have noticed is once you click on save uh, the name of the tab changes to the display name that we just filled in and now let's define an SM click on new fill in the SM's name and display name and then click on save So we just define an SM and now we need we need to associate some applications with SM. Click on search and add. So now we've associated the new application with the SM. Now let's go distribute the policies. So that way the policies will be in effect. Click on policy distribution tab. And select the SM and distribute click on distribute. You have to click on distribute to make sure that whatever policies that you've defined will be pushed to the SM. If you don't click on distribute then these policies are still there but it's just that they won't take effect. Now let's create an SM instance. It's good to copy the file that got delivered with OES to a different name and then modify the new file. You only need to modify two parameters in this file. the PD server host name and the port number these are these are the same values that you filled in when you created weblogic domain so host is where your admin is running and the port number is the SSL port which is one higher than your non SSL port number CD to the bin directory and now we'll, we'll run the real command I strongly recommend that you copy paste these commands because it's very easy to make a mistake. You need to fill in the key store passwords and the password for your weblogic domain. And now we've created the SM. Let's go to the SM instance directory. So now I'm going to copy the Java file that I created a little while back. And remember the class path. You normally do all these things from a build script. Now let's try to compile this Java program. Okay. As you will see the code is very simple and straightforward. So here we are creating the user web logic and the authorization decision is on application slash resource type slash resource and the action we are requesting is write and we are running the decision we are running the authorization request within a while loop so that way we periodically check for authorization and see if anything has changed and I'm printing the authorization response that we get back let's uh, go and run this program and, and see what we get
when you first start the SM for a couple of seconds you will always see false this is where the cache is getting warmed up and after that you'll start seeing the actual authorization decision now let's modify the authorization policy and see what happens click on search to find the authorization policy and open now let's take away the right privilege and give read, pri read privilege as part of the policy and click on apply we have to distribute the policies otherwise they won't take effect select the SM click on distribute and now let's go back and check if the authorization response has changed as you can see the authorization response has already started to change we are seeing false this is because we've taken away the right privilege this is a ba very basic example of how to use OES and it's very simple and rudimentary uh, we'll, we'll have more interesting use cases moving forward so watch out for new videos and articles on my blog